So welcome back to Music Man's Ride. Today is video number two in our How to Ride series. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the friction zone. We're gonna get the bike moving, and I'm gonna show you how to stop the bike, because that's pretty important once you get her rolling down the road. All right, so here we are on the bike. Quick review before we get this thing started. So, if you remember, left side here, this is gonna be where our clutch is located. We're gonna be using that to control our friction zone. Right hand side, you have your throttle, brake, starter, kill switch, turn signal on the left side, turn signal on the right side, heel toe shifter, left side foot, rear brake, right side foot. All right, so if you remember the startup procedure, you're gonna put your key in your bike. If you have a key, turn that dude to ignition on. Make sure your kill switch is off. And get the starter. All right, so now we have the bike running. Let's start working on that, uh, that friction zone and getting this thing moving. So first off, we're gonna have to stand it up off the kickstand. Uh, for me, it's quite easy just to Tip the bike over, using my thighs to push it. No problem, comes right off the kickstand. But I'm gonna show you guys a trick for the smaller, more petite riders that might have some issue doing that. If you guys take your handlebars, crank them all the way over to the right. Did you notice how much the bike moved there? It's more upright like this than it is with the handlebars over to the left. And make standing up your bike a complete breeze. There's almost no effort to doing it. Uh, so for you smaller, more petite riders, if you're riding something that's quite large, that's gonna be something to really help you out with getting your bike up off the kickstand. Now to get the bike in gear, you're gonna grab the clutch, pull the clutch all the way in, and you're gonna use your left foot to click it down into first gear. All right, so now we're in first gear. We're ready to roll, but I'm still holding that front brake. Just make good practice now, guys. Start it while you're starting out. Hold the bike in place with your right foot as much as possible. This is gonna give your right hand the freedom it needs to manipulate the throttle a little bit easier. All right, so friction zone on the motorcycle. Controlling this is controlling your bike. Controlling the friction zone is probably one of the most, if not the most important skill you can learn riding a motorcycle. So, to find your friction zone, if you guys can hear the engine on the bike, as I slowly release the clutch lever here, you're gonna hear the engine change a little bit. It's gonna sound a little more gurgly. It's gonna start struggling a little bit because it's sending some of that engine power now back to the rear wheel. Clutch all the way in, no power to the rear wheel. All the power is staying up here in the engine. When you start letting out and getting into that friction zone, your engine is trying to send some of that power to your back wheel. Of course, I'm holding it in place with the rear brake so you're not gonna see it. But the point where you hear the engine kind of bog down a little bit, or I'll throttle up so you can hear it better. You hear the throttle down? That is my friction zone. So from there, just kind of get a feel for where that's at. It might take you a little bit. You might stall your bike. Look, it's not that big of a deal. Stall the bike. It's embarrassing when you've been riding for a while and you do it in front of your buddies, but sitting here in the parking lot is not a big deal. You're gonna stall it in practice, it happens. Just make sure you're safe and stable when you do it. You, know, you don't want any drops that you can avoid. We got the clutch all the way in, bike's in first gear, held with a brake. We have found our friction zone. Now what I want you to do is when you hit that friction zone, 
you can release that rear brake. And you see your friction zone will hold the bike in place. Now, with both feet on the ground, keep them both on the ground. We're gonna let out on that friction zone till the bike starts rolling forward. When we get forward, we're just gonna squeeze the brake to stop it. Pull your clutch all the way back in and then use your brake to let the bike slide back so you're back to flat foot. And we're gonna do this several times. This is just a good exercise so that you learn where your friction zone at. We're roll her forward, let her rock back. Let it come forward and let her rock back. Let it go forward. Now remember this is all friction zone, no throttle hand. No throttle here, we're not cheating. Let her come back. See, once you get a little more comfortable doing it, if you notice, I am not using any brake now to stop the bike. I'm just using the friction zone to control how far it's moving forward and to control how far it's going backwards. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time to develop the muscle memory to where you're pretty efficient with this. I know people that have been riding for years and still don't have a super huge grasp on their friction zone. And it makes all the difference. In a small bike, it's not so bad. It's not such an issue. But the larger the bike you have, the more it exasperates everything you're doing. Um, that's why they recommend most riders start on a smaller bike because larger bikes are definitely more difficult to handle. So I'm gonna let it roll back here a little bit more. I'm gonna come out of camera frame over there, hopefully. Hopefully I'm out of camera frame. For your next exercise we're gonna to do to get the bike rolling, we're gonna do what's called a duck walk. And I'm sure you guys have seen riders do this at stoplights or in parking lots. Uh, anytime basically the bike's going to be moving too slow to keep both your feet up. Which the better rider you get, the less that happens. So what we're going to do is same as before. We're going to let out on the friction zone. We're going to get that bike started rolling forward. And we're going to walk with it. Keep it in the friction zone, nice and slow. Just hold it there. But we're gonna walk with the bike. So you can see my feet moving here. Make sure you can see them. <laughs> we're gonna walk it forward. And we're just gonna walk the bike. Nothing fancy here. We're not trying to get it up to riding speed or anything like that. And as we're doing this, we're gonna keep it inside that friction zone. Now I'm in a not level parking lot. So you gotta be careful when you do this. But we're just gonna walk the bike around. Now we're kinda of cheating, we're going downhill. This is a good time. To use your front brake to control that forward speed to make sure you're just not booking it. All right. We don't want to get going too fast downhill. So make sure you're using your front brake to control your speed. We're keeping it at a nice, smooth walking pace. All right. So 
So we want to keep the bike at a nice smooth walking pace, just using our feet to help keep it upright, keep it balanced. All right, there we go. And slow down a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, now that we've gotten accustomed to duck walking and controlling our speed, you know, maintaining that point on your clutch to keep your friction zone and using the front brake to maintain your speed, I think it's time we get our feet off the ground. So, same thing as before. No throttle, no throttle yet. We're gonna let out on that friction zone till the bike starts moving. We're gonna walk with it until it gets to a point where it's a little too quick for our feet, and then just pick them up. We're not, still not all the way out on the clutch yet. I'm still riding in the friction zone. Let's go back down here and try it again. One more time, a little bit faster. All right. So, one more time. We're gonna let out on the friction zone till the bike starts moving. We're gonna start walking with it. We're getting a little too fast for our feet to be down. Pick them up. And we're rolling. Look at that. The bike will idle and power itself just fine in first gear at a nice, smooth, slow, slow pace. All right, so we got our friction zone. We got our duck walking. We got our feet up. We're rolling in first gear. Now, how do you stop this crazy thing? Easy, use your brakes, dummy. So, front brake controls the brakes on the front tire. Rear brake, down here for your foot, controls the brakes for your back tire. Should be pretty easy to, to figure out which one's which, right? Um, but this is where it's gonna be really important to make sure you do, you're using the right brake. When you're stopping at slow speeds and you have your handlebars turned, like so, if you use that front brake, your bike naturally will want to lean to the side. So if you have your handlebars turned, you squeeze that front brake, your bike comes to a jerky halt, and you're gonna dump your bike. easy way to remedy this when you're getting to a stop release pressure off that front brake and complete the stop using your back brake always use your brakes in tandem there's a few scenarios where you won't do that and one of the, the situations where you're not going to use them in tandem is when you're coming to a complete stop uh, when you do that when you come to a complete stop you want to make sure you're leaning slightly to the left and put your left foot down. That way the bike doesn't tip. <clears throat> and we're in first gear today. We're not getting up any, to any higher gears. But when you're out riding out in the street, you want to make sure you downshift to first gear and leave it in first gear when you come to a stop. Hold your clutch in to take all the power out of the back wheel both brakes to begin stopping right before you come to a complete stop release that front brake use that back brake to complete the stop lean slightly to the left and catch your motorcycle all right so let's see this in action all right friction zone duck walk 
feed her up. We are needing to come to a stop. I don't want to hit my camera. So we start applying the brakes. Finish the stop with that rear brake, not your front brake. Let's try it again. I'm just okay, guys. So remember, this is YouTube. If at any point you feel like I'm going a little bit fast for you, rewind the video, pause it, watch it again. It it really is that easy. It, it's YouTube, man. Go back and watch enough times so you kind of have a really good gist of what we're doing here and then play it through before you give it a shot. So starting out again, practicing that braking. We're gonna get moving, friction zone, duck walk, feet up, we're moving. Apply both brakes, lean to the left, complete the stop using that rear brake only, left foot down. So while we're at it guys, bonus tip for today, I know I didn't really talk much about turning, but if you're in a parking lot like I am, you're probably gonna need to turn your bike at least a little bit. And we're not really talking super slow speed maneuvers, anything crazy like that. So, when you're turning your bike and you're in a parking lot, say we want to turn to our right. We're going to be going a slow enough speed in first gear that you just turn your handlebars the direction you want the bike to go. Now, we're not gonna lean with the bike yet. That's, that's for a different video further down the line. We're gonna do what's called a counter lean. And we're actually gonna lean away from the bike. So, to illustrate what we're doing, we'll go up here to the camera and I'll turn around right in front of it. Big sweeping turn. Nothing too complicated, but I'm gonna lean over and I'm gonna as I turn to the right, I'm going to lean to my left and put some weight on the left side of my fourth point of contact down here. And that's going to get me just enough to get the bike turn. Now, <clears throat> to go to the left, same thing. You just put that weight on the right side of your fourth point of contact. Turn your handlebars to the left. It's important to start doing the little techniques right, right from the start. So while you're doing this, I know we're in first gear, we're not really going that fast, but I want you to give it just a little bit of rear brake. Just enough to activate your brake light. This is what's called dragging your rear brake. And when you drag your rear brake, it's going to help you feel more stable as you make those turns to your left and to your right. This Mostly this, especially when you're doing slow speed maneuvers in a parking lot, which is what we're doing today. So you want to give it a little bit of rear brake, just enough to activate your rear brake light, complete your turn. We'll do it a couple times going to the right here. I turn to the right, wait on the left, Drag that rear brake. All right, nice big swooping turns. We're in a mostly empty parking lot. There's all kinds of stuff out here in the parking lot, but it's all far enough off. I don't have to worry about hitting it. Quick review for today's video. 
getting your bike moving using the friction zone and stopping. Find your friction zone, get the bike moving, start walking your feet, come out of the friction zone, feet up, and as you approach, both brakes to stop, complete your stop using rear brake only. Lean the bike to the left, use your left foot to support the weight of the bike. So to get your bike back in neutral, you can put your left foot underneath your shift lever, you're going to lift up using your toe just enough, you'll feel a slight click, see no neutral light, lift till you feel a slight click, there we go, and the neutral light's on. Put our kickstand down. You can release the clutch now. Lean your bike over on the kickstand. And shut it off. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope it was informative and you got something out of it. Remember to practice these techniques over and over again. It's not going to come super quick. It's going to take some practice. You need to build that muscle memory. So get out there, find you an open parking lot or a reasonably open one like I did. Hopefully it's more level and just practice these techniques over and over again. Just practice, 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 all right? The more you practice these techniques, the better you're gonna get at them. And this is all stuff you're gonna use the rest of your time that you're riding motorcycles, however long that's gonna be. Uh, you may just decide one day to up and sell your bike, you've had enough of it. Or you may be a lifer like I plan to be, and you may have to switch to a trike at some point. All right, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the bell on so you get all the notifications. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss the next video where I show you guys how to get up into second gear. And I'm gonna teach you some slow speed maneuvers for parking lots to help build your confidence up before we get out on the road. And as always guys, I'll see y'all out on the next ride.